What's up guys, my name is Matt and this is Hidden Light and today we're talking about what we are printing because we're all printing together. So we'll start with my prints and then we'll move to what you guys have been submitting on the Discord. If you're not on the Discord, you should be. There's a link in the, uh, what's it called? Comments, description, both, I don't know. So we'll start with what I've been printing recently, um, mostly from 8x10. Because uh, if you're new here, I'm shooting 8x10 for the year of 2022, and it's going <laughs> it's going mostly okay so far. We're getting there. Um, so one thing I have is I have this project motorcycle. Uh, it's been in a lot of parts for a long time, and I'm finally getting things put back together. Uh, but while I had the engine out of the frame on the desk, I brought the 8x10 down and photographed it, which was really fun. And despite carefully controlled conditions and constant lighting, somehow I still managed to miss focus. Like, I got all the time in the world, no one's rushing me, the subject's not moving, and somehow I still managed to miss it. That's life. Um, but it's close enough, and what I've been finding is that when I'm missing focus on the 8x10, printing contact on a kinda toothy paper like Arch Platine lets me fake it a little. So these are what I would call sharp adjacent or sharp enough. Um, this part kind of here looks mostly in focus. Um, these are, I've got a whole, I've recorded like a little video of me doing the lab time stuff. That was out in the last old news. That was the sort of middle fun lab time section. So, um, but yeah. Good chemistry mix. I'm actually getting pretty good contrast in these. During that um, printing day, I decided to do an experiment and see what the difference was between doing a low humidity environment, low humidity paper, and a high humidity environment, high humidity experience with the exact same everything else. And there is a difference, <laughs> but it's not necessarily as much of a difference as you might think. Um, let me just make sure these are the right two. Yeah, they are. So high humidity, low humidity, right? This is a little flatter. My black around the edges definitely is not nearly as good. We've got lower contrast overall. But aside from that, everything should be the same. So what I'm getting here is brighter highlights, a little bit better detail, a deeper blacks. Uh, I'm not sure that I would call it a huge difference, but it is a difference. And definitely worth it enough to me to keep using the higher humidity paper that's been sitting and was able to humidify over time. So. Other than that, these were exactly the same thing. I thought for a minute when I had made these two prints that I had accidentally, because I have two sheets from the same, you know, exposure, or two different sheets of film that I shot at the same time, I was worried that I had managed to, like, swap negatives because of how different in contrast they appear. But nope, same negative. It's just the difference that humidity makes in platinum printing. So, I don't know. That's kind of cool. Um... I like this one. I'm, I'm kind of into that motorcycle vibe right now. Spring is here and <sighs> I'm ready to get back on the bike and go do fun things. And um, this motorcycle project is uh, coming to a point where it's almost done and I might be able to like see if it runs, which is a possibility. <laughs> um, definitely not guaranteed. But yeah, super, super feeling that. I'm going to frame one of these up and keep it and I'll probably sell two others that are the correct exposure from the high humidity experience. Um, yeah. So I also did this image twice. Um, this one was tough. I thought this was going to be a lot lower exposure. I think this was something like five or seven minutes and this one ended up somewhere near 11. Don't mind the streaking. I had crap on my brush, which is what led to this. And you can't really see the contamination or, or whatever it was that was going on on the brush until you see the prints. So, whoops, I'm gonna be remaking these 
at this exposure, which minus sky streaking and general shenanigans, I'm very happy with. Uh, in proper light, this print looks really good. I'm very pleased with it. Very sharp, exactly what I was hoping for in terms of the exposure, in terms of the contrast. You can see all the clouds, or you would be able to see the clouds if my brush stroke shenanigans hadn't happened. I don't know, I like this one. So I'm gonna go through this one again with a clean brush, exact same settings, 11 minutes. Um, this is, nice try. It always takes me a couple of tries to get there, you know? This is the one that I didn't think was gonna look good at all. Again, you can see the start of some of my brush streak shenanigans here, but that's life. Um, I don't know how I managed this. While we were out there shooting an 8x10, I managed to not get my horizon level. I don't know if you've ever seen ground glass on an 8x10, but it's got a grid that shows you like what's level. And I managed to just totally screw the pooch on this. I blame the wind. It was windy as hell. If you haven't watched the video of what my experience was like that day shooting, uh, go check it out. It's in a, <laughs> it's a couple of weeks ago. If God. <laughs> Um, shooting the 8x10 in that kind of wind was ridiculous. That being said, this turned out okay, reasonably sharp. Um, I gave this all the contrast that I can give it in Platinum, and it's nowhere near enough. So if I actually end up producing this series of prints, they're probably going to end up being silver gelatin, where I can just nuke in some contrast. I mean, silver's higher contrast to begin with, but if I push it a little, um, you know, throw some magenta in the head or something, I'll be able to get some proper contrast. You'll be able to see that there's a little bit of rain going on out here. Uh, and if I do a non-contact print, I can, I can get that horizon level. You know, we just, just tilt it to the point where it looks like I shot it on purpose. And we'll end up cropping a little bit out in order to do that, but that's life. If you're gonna do enlargements, you're gonna crop stuff anyway, so who cares? I like the general idea of this. I wish I'd had better modeled light, you know, kind of through here. Uh, this one is not a platinum print. I may scan it and do piezography or scan it and do a lot of Photoshop work to get the contrast up and then print it in platinum. But as a contact print, I'm not sure. It might just be too freaking low contrast, even when it's brighter and if there were no streaks. It's just rough. So uh, I would say I'm making progress on some of those. I wouldn't say I'm, I'm, I think this one is the only one that I'm like, okay, yes, this is, this is done. This is where it needs to be. I'm ready to finish the edition and put one on the wall. The rest of them are still works in progress. And that's my life. I don't know if it's because I was in a hurry, you know, doing a video, trying to multitask. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but some days you uh, spend all this money making prints and all of them look like shit. So. That's my life. We've all been there. And then just to mix things up for you guys, I've got a color print. Um, but it's really big. I'll put it. I'll put it on that camera, and maybe it fits in the frame. Um, I shot in color. <gasps> I shot a digital camera. Uh, I shot this one a while ago. It's twenty. No, thirteen. I think images stitched together, and then. It look, I tried it black and white, it looked terrible, so I printed it uh, in color, and I think it looks rather good. We'll run it through the uh, top down here so you can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, <laughs> kind of starts out here in these beautiful clouds. You know, I printed this while I was doing head checks on a printer, so it's got some banding and stuff, um, but the file itself is gorgeous. Burp. A little tilty. <laughs> I don't know. I feel pretty good about it. I like it. It's it's so panoramic that framing it would be nearly impossible. Uh, but the native size of this file, because it's it's so many frames stitched together, is something like 80 or 100 inches on the long edge at 300 ppi, which is, again, just no reason to print that big. You could, there's a video we did about ppi and printing and stuff like that. Um, anyway, I don't know. It's kind of fun, switching things up, a little bit of color. I know I said I'm only gonna shoot the eight by 10 this year, but sometimes you have to also take other pictures with other cameras. Sometimes setting up the eight by 10 to do this from the top of my RV in the wind 
when the light is changing, uh, there's just no way. Like, you know, it takes me a half hour to set up and get a shot and tear down. And this took me two minutes to take my digital camera and and then rock and roll. I did it probably four or five times with different settings just to, you know, cover my bases. But plus I don't even have color film for the eight by 10 because oh, stuff's expensive. And I'm printing in platinum this year. So that's my images. Let's look at your images from the old Discord. Uh, we'll just switch to the screen here so you can see what I'm looking at. This is Discord, so welcome. Um, this we talked about last time, so we're moving on to our friend Chaz. Who... Chaz, oh my god, dude. You're, you're insane. He made this incredible 30 by 40 Platinum in his kitchen. And, not only did he do that, he did a video of it. Check this out. Uh, we'll link this, you know, sort of down below. But he shows us, you know, file work and printing the digital negative. You know, all this stuff just in his house. Grabs his negative, he's setting things up on his countertop, getting the paper size squared away. My internet's taking a dump. Mixing his emulsion. Which, shot glass, good job. All the cool kids do it. Or is that like a espresso glass? Either way, I dig it. Uh, we gotta show the coating of the paper. So here's Arsh Platine. You can tell from just the way that it is and because he's a smart dude. He looks like he's got the same general idea of a brush as I have. And just look at this stuff go on here. This is nuts. This is a huge amount of emulsion. I would call this a drastic overcoat. He probably could have got away with a lot less, but his coat ends up being extremely even because he's overcoated. If you can t spare the money to overcoat a sheet of paper like this, you'll get, you'll get much better results than if you're trying to undercoat, trying to cheap out, but <laughs> he takes this thing over to his uh, UV unit eventually, which needs new gas struts, and you can tell because he ends up holding the thing up with his head. <laughs> uh, yep, he's holding it up with his head there. But you know what? Good for you, getting it done. Um, exposes it to UV light. Does all of his chemicals right here on the kitchen countertop. Oh wait, mixing everything in by hand. Gives me the heebie-jeebies. Here's the splash. <gasps> Ooh, ah, out of a five gallon bucket like a boss. Yeah, that face. Incredible. So 10 points for not only doing platinum at home, but doing a freaking big platinum at home. That is just nuts. And it looks gorgeous. Hung up in what I assume is the shower to dry, and then up on the wall after it's been framed in a double black ornate frame. Again, killed it, dude. Ugh, love to see that. 10 points. Uh, let's see. S. Bills, shooting on his blad. Looks like a fiber-based print from the curliness of it. Man, fiber's a lot harder to work with than RC, isn't it? That's, that's just life, but um, this looks really good. I love the contrast. I love your super narrow depth of field. I am about narrow depth of field. I love it. Give me that wide open all the time look. And the bigger your film, the better it looks. Just that fall off, you know? Just, ah, oh, bokehlicious. This looks really good, I love this. I love that you, I can't tell if this is paper border. It probably is. Included some paper border there, because going straight to the edge would have been brutal. But that looks great. A little like, sort of dead flower looking thing going on. Good for you. And um, this person, Armsters. If you guys don't make your screen names your name, I have no idea who you are. Uh, <laughs> He made some platinum prints in Uke. Um, got a little Kiki Meow Meow. 
Looks like that might have been shot on film because he really pulled the highlights down here. That's got a film look to it. It looks beautiful. And uh, that's not a cow. I got Kiki Meow Meow. That's an animal. Love the brushstroke borders. Killing it. So cool. I love the warmth you're getting in these. I like the black borders. I can tell that this isn't Arche Platine. This is the other paper you used. Um, I can tell that by, the, I think, the way the, the brush strokes look. Whereas this looks much more like Arche. But super cool. The bird in this makes it. And it perfectly in frame. Totally killed it. That warmth of platinum, though. <sighs> looks great, man. Good for you for going and taking a workshop. You should do them in your kitchen. Or anywhere, really. I mean, these, these look great. Love that. Getting after it. Arsh and Burger. Those are the two papers he used for those. AO is a color dude. As far as I can tell, everything I've seen from him has been color. Um, is it Alexander? Is that your name? I think it is. He does like these badass, like abstract color experiences. And the minimalist white framing here totally works for me. Love this. He didn't make this print himself, but who cares? Here's a metal print that someone else did. Who did this? David did this one. He actually showed somewhere else on the Discord the setup that went into making this because it's like a miniature. He's like, build the set and put in the snow and put in the dude and light it and freaking cool. And very importantly, David, good job lighting your print. Uh, the extra light on a metal print makes all the difference in the world. Jack was here at Hidden Light doing silver prints with Taylor. And so he and Taylor made this one, which I think he shot on a 6.7. And I love this image. This was probably on Ilford Warm Tone, if I had to guess, just by the tone of this against what I'm, what looks like one of our tabletops. We have the same color orange tabletops but this looks great and he shows his little um test trips that that were done too you know you kind of do one at one contra contrast range or on one paper you do one on the other that looks like classic tone and warm tone and i don't know i wasn't really paying attention while they were here doing the workshop but it looks great that's a that's a lovely image you wouldn't think that it was like set up and posed and like you know, it just looks natural. So good job, Jack. Andy Orr. These are cool. He's doing these. So he goes out, shoots them digital, right? Because it's the only way. And then he's doing these platinum prints at home. And he leaves, he as part of the negative, he puts in this box so that he can have someone, a calligraphist, calligrapher, come in and write in in this freaking 1800 script California condor which I think is really cool. That looks great. And he's getting big snap out of these. Like if this is the contrast that this print actually looks like, that's a lot of contrast for platinum. So great job, Andy. William Hagues posting a platinum he's got here and he's asking me a question about warmth or coolness of an image. And uh, we answered that question in uh, the uh, old news with the fact section. So go check that out. That was a couple days ago. Anyway, if you make prints of any kind, or if you have prints made of your work, take photos, take videos, join Discord, post them up in the YouTube submissions section. I'll, every time I record one of these videos, I hop on and say, hey everyone, time to post up what you've been printing. And you post them here and we talk about them and show them off, which is fun. Anyway, that's um, that's it. Man, this one's cool. Anyway, we'll see you on Discord. See you on Instagram. See you on YouTube. We'll see you. We'll just see you around.